Welcome back to the show. Well, after we've had all these new candidates on, I always then like to have a chat with uh, the people behind the scenes who actually make it work, who've been around a bit and seen it all. And who better than Mr Bruce Hawker, uh, former Labor strategist, Hawker Britain. Um, what, uh, how, many how many campaigns in your history have you done? Well, I stopped counting around about 40. Okay. And uh, hopefully there's one or two left in me yet, but I think I've seen most of them come around and go around. And so you're probably familiar with, like, a 26-year-old flux party person, right? all full of <laughs> enthusiasm, or Evan Hughes, who's in the yeah. um, Whitworth seat, and there they are, battling away. Out to knock over Malcolm Turnbull. He yeah. said he played golf with you and said he was thinking of running, and you said, don't be an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not too far from the truth. <laughs> Although, you know, a candidate uh, in... A, a good candidate in a seat like Wentworth for the Labor Party can get out there and start to... Was a few issues for the... Well, he's lead. making a noise. What, what do you think is a strategy, make Point Piper great again and his I Miss Malcolm badges? <laughs> it's, it's all about getting noticed, isn't it? Indeed. Indeed. And, and also, you know, trying to keep the Prime Minister at home occasionally on a few issues that might, uh, you know, cause him a bit of problem. So well, let's look at this trend towards the minor parties. We've been talking about it. This isn't new. It didn't just happen in this election. But this election, it's certainly focusing the attention. And when you see polls, like, in the last few weeks, saying that up to one in four voters could be planning to vote for a minor party, does this surprise you? Uh, well, yes and no. I mean, it, it is historically a large number. But no, because I think it, we're seeing an increasing level of disenchantment, I think, with major parties, not just here, but around the world. We're seeing it in the United States in a very graphic way with people like Trump coming up. In the UK, you're seeing it as well with some, uh, you know, unusual Labor candidates like, and leaders like uh, Jeremy Corbyn. So here, I think part of the problem is that, you know, the Labor Party probably isn't entirely forgiven yet for some of the problems that they've had over in, in the Rudd-Gillard-Rudd years. Uh, you know, responsibility for some of which I have to take. But, there, but the Liberal Party, on the other hand, um, went through a difficult period with Tony Abbott, obviously very effective in opposition, but very ineffective as a Prime Minister. In comes Malcolm... Uh, in comes um, uh, Turnbull. Uh, everyone thinks he's going to change... But, of course, he doesn't really change. And this creates disillusionment and unhappiness. So why wouldn't people then start to trend towards minor parties? It's interesting you, you make the point about overseas. You see, I watched that per first People's Forum and I saw two basically intelligent, smart, civil men having a very polite discussion, not being too rude to each other, talking about the issues... And I was filled with hope for our democracy that we weren't a Donald Trump or a mad Jeremy Corbyn in the UK. Mm. And events this week in mm. both those countries show, show us that people go around going, oh, they're so boring, and I think Shorten's boring. Mm. And it just seems wrong that that should be what we want, Maybe isn't we it? should have a bit of boring. Shouldn't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, looking at Queensland's a good example of that after uh, Campbell Newman and, and, you know, and the crazy period of his... Uh, premiership when, you know, they went all out on cost-cutting and so forth. Um, what did the electorate do? They went to... Um, oh, yeah, we shape. wanted to change, but yeah. not that much. Well, <laughs> and, and, they, and, they, and they flipped right back to the Labor Party. And, and, and really, you know, in, uh, in, in Palaszczuk, the Premier there, you've got somebody who doesn't really, you know, rock the boat. They seem to be steady. Maybe that's just what Queenslanders want now, a bit of steadiness after the mercurial up and down of uh, politics over the last few years. But again, you've hit the nail on the head. I don't understand voters, and I don't want to blame them, but we hear that they're sick of, you said it, the Gillard Rudd years and all the change that happened in Queensland. So we hear this, that they want a bit of certainty. So... Then they announce that they then they say to the pollsters that they're going to vote for these minor parties in the Senate, which has led to incredible dysfunction. Mm. Do they not realise that they are only perpetuating the chaos by doing this? Well, yeah, maybe. Maybe they just want a little bit of that. Maybe they don't want the parties <laughs> to be too entrenched, to be too comfortable in their... Yeah, but you know, then they blame themselves. them when they can't do anything sure do. and it's not yeah. their fault. It, yeah. it is ridiculous. Exactly. And, you know, and, and you see these swings in the way in which the, the, you know, the public all around the world look at issues and, and you know, side with one side of politics and then over to the other. Um, you know, that's part and parcel of the process. I mean, you know... In well, the parties United... need to be more agile, don't they? Well, <laughs> they probably do, yes. Yes, exactly. And, and that means giving leaders more autonomy. You see, if, if Malcolm Turnbull had more autonomy, 
I think you'd probably be seeing a different campaign now, but he's being held back by his own party. Well, you could Kevin say Rudd the same him. about Bill Shorten with the unions and the constraints he has. Well, too. I think that's a real problem with the Labor Party. I think, and I've said that for many, many years now, that, uh, you know, the strong ties to the union movement, although they're important historically, probably are coming to a point where they're no longer really necessary. You know, Labor should be able to maintain its commitment to fair industrial workplaces and so forth without actually having to have those... Uh, really strong ties which which actually bind leaders in a way which is not necessarily good. Tell us what you think of the campaign so far and do you believe the polls? The latest today showing that whatever we're seeing and how close it is, in effect it's all about the marginals and Labor's just not getting there. What, what, how are you seeing it? Yeah, well, I'm a little bit skeptical about that poll uh, in news poll today in The Australian, but I still you know, have to take those things seriously because they're done as scientifically as you can do polling. And they do tend to suggest that the big swings aren't there at the moment. But, once again, getting back to the minor parties, uh, that the success or otherwise of uh, both of the major parties will depend to a large extent on what uh, smaller parties like the Xenophon party do with their preferences. Now, mainly I think Xenophon is saying that he's going to have an open ticket. In other words, he's not telling people to vote Liberal or Labor as a second preference. Uh, and so it'll be largely left up to people who are voting for him, say, in South Australia, to, um, to really decide who's going to be the, the government in, in, in many ways. Two weeks to go, from where you're sitting, what do you think it looks like at the moment? I think it could be a hung parliament. Uh, I don't put that uh, beyond the realms of you know, possibility at all. And I think if someone offered you odds on a hung parliament, I'd probably be inclined to take them. Why? Because uh, the government only needs to lose 13 seats to lose its majority in the parliament as a result of this redistribution that's come about uh, in the last few months. And, uh, you know, if Labor were to pick up 10 seats, well, then you only need about three or four seats for the government to be pushed into minority. And the Greens could easily pick up, uh, you know, a, a seat from either of the... both of the big parties down in Victoria. There's... Two, you know, Labor obviously is going to have to fight in Batman with David Feeney to hold his seat. And they're talking about Kelly O'Dwyer being in, in, struggle, in trouble in, uh, in Higgins uh, for the Liberals. Then you've got the Xenophon people. Any, any Xenophon candidate that comes second... In, the, in South Australia, in the lower house, is likely to win on preferences from the other parties. So what's going to happen there? You could get uh, some upset results there. Um, you know, it, it could... Tony Windsor's uh, a possibility in, in, uh, in uh, New England. You look at all these independents running, well, it's not beyond the realms of possibility at all. Then in the Senate, Xenophon... Could... I was going to say, so we've got a hung parliament, then you're going to have all these independents in the Senate. You're going to have a double-hung parliament, because in, in the uh, Senate, for example, Xenophon... Uh, people could win up to four seats of the 12 Senate positions which are being contested down there. I mean, that would be an incredible result. But, yeah, it's not, it's not uh, beyond the realms of possibility, and that's what happens when you have a, dis a double dissolution election where you halve the quotas that are required. Never been a more exciting time to cover politics, <laughs> has it, by the sound of it? I don't think it's boring at all. I, I think don't, it's I hate it when people say it's boring. I'm yeah. finding it an absolutely fascinating election, yeah. particularly, as we said, because people are doing the opposite to what you expect. Yeah. Bruce, it was lovely to talk to you. Long time no see, and yeah. uh, we'll look forward to talking to you again because there's plenty more excitement coming in this election campaign. Bruce Hawker there. Uh, we're going to finish up the show. We'll be back next week with So You Want to Be